unto the Lord, for the Lord is good. The Lord's mercy and truth endureth to all generations. Let us rise and join in singing the opening hymn of the procession, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
pray, God, we thank you that we are on holy ground. That we have the charge and the challenge this day to lay aside every sin and weight that does so easily beset us. That we may renew our vows and commitments to run this Christian race. That we will not run it in a faulty, fragile manner, but with faith, fortitude, and with indeed the fellowship that is becoming of Cornelia, the people of God gathered together. God, and we thank you this morning that there are afterglows of fellowship, food, and fun that this fellowship experienced on yesterday. When the men gathered and shared their culinary skills with this church family and with the community. And we pray now, God, that thou would enable us to feast on the spiritual, intellectual, social, and indeed the moral food that we need to be vibrant, to be full of vigor, to be full, O oh God, of those principles that go for the making of a better society. Have mercy upon us and forgive each one of his or her sins. Direct our minds, creating us a clean heart. Give us a strong desire to seek thy will. Thy way, O oh Lord, not ours. Thy will be done, not ours. Teach us this day and every day to say thy will be done. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, me be a sanctuary. You and holy. Try it true. With thanksgiving. all join in singing the opening hymn of praise come thy fount of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mount I'm fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love let us all now join in singing come thy fount
come thy foul. Antiphonally, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Praise the one who sitteth upon the throne, who's worthy of honor and majesty and glory and praise. Hallelujah. Give yourselves a big round of applause for that moving, matchless singing of that hymn of the church, Come Thy Fount of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy praise a lot of things out of tune there's too much concophony in the world too many sour notes too many jangling discords dissonance that's symbolically embodied in hatred, ignorance, injustice, poverty, and division. But thanks be to God, we are here on holy ground to praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we ought to give this wonderful aggregation of singers a big shout out and a big amen. They're backing us up this morning. I know that some maybe had uh, their second and third helpings on yesterday. And they're taking a long sleep this morning. But thanks be to God for Deacon Campbell and all the deacons and members of the general church who assisted them on yesterday. From all indication, it was off the hook yesterday. And the best we had. And Dr. A.G. was singularly honored with a trophy for his big heart that has caused him to be involved every year. Give him a big hand. Give Dr. A.G. a big hand. He always brings that smoked turkey. And oh, yes. And the fellowship was great. That's what the church ought to be about, as it was on the day of Pentecost, when they were at one place, on one accord. They broke bread together. They studied the teachings of the apostles. And then more importantly, they made commitments to go out and to be a witness for their Lord. So I know next year is going to even be bigger and better. We're going to go higher and higher and higher virtually doing what the song says. Climb Jacob's ladder and at every round go higher and higher and higher. I regret that I was not able to be there throughout the portion, but I thank God is better late than never. And I was late for a good reason. Because there is an aggregation of faith leaders of communions in this Bay Area who have made history. Allen Temple, Third Baptist, 
and Bethlehem Baptist Church ordained would you believe it on yesterday the spirits the intellect and the will of five ordinaries four women and one man that was his star y'all ought to be you'll give a big hand for that thing that delayed me is that one of the ordinaries, Mother Ruth Marshall, who is 93 years old, was catechized, and your pastor was chair of the Council for Ordination, and her testimony just mesmerize everybody. I'll tell you about it later on in my sermon. But in 93, she said, I'm not too old to not be a servant of my God. But I promised him way back in Timotho, Louisiana. How many of y'all know where Timotho is? Down there in the Bayou country. She said, I promised the Lord that I would serve him until I die. And I was determined to go to the other side to see what the end would be. And she said, though I was called in 1980 at the age of 83. But they wouldn't tell me to come up higher. She said, but at 93. The Lord has brought me through. Give her a big hand. So this afternoon at four o'clock at Bethlehem Church, there will be the laying on of hands of these five per persons who've been set aside, anointed to preach the gospel. Now let us be blessed with the music coming from the United Voices. Let's say amen for all of these men. Amen.
sing it. Let the church say amen. amen. The angels in glory couldn't have sung it any better. Give our choir another big round of applause. Oh, and as we move along, as we move along, we're going to involve you now in taking you back to Dr. Tinley, the great father of gospel music, who said one day, we are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists are rolled away, we'll understand it better by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home. We're gonna tell the story. Yes, Do you have a story to tell? Do you have a story to tell? How God brought you through many trials and tribulations. If you have a story to tell, stand to your feet. Everybody.
pray that by and by our sick members of the fellowship will experience wellness, good health, and peace. Let us pray for Geraldine Earp, Evelyn Lockhart, Audrey Johnson, Joanna Miles, Maple Rab, Naomi Ruth Pierce, Olga Preston Brown, Vera Russell, Glenn Scales, Patience Scales, Fellow Smith. And let us thank God that he was able and his wife Beverly to make it to the men who cook on yesterday. Pray for Earl Wells, Willie Pearl Williams, Adele Adams, Cheryl Brown, Ollie Timms, David Vacari, Joanna Rollins, Samuel H. Robertson, Inez Phillips, Bobby Pullian, Sheffy McMullen, Donna Octavia, Charles Hushman, Gilda Maddox, Ellen McDougall, Mark Jones, Julia Jackson, Valerie Fuller, Otis Cook, Paul Joseph, Sarah Christopher, Cheryl Brown, and if there are other names, pray for Sister uh, Deacon Doris Word. Are there other names? Let us continue to pray for Congressman John Lewis, our friend and civil rights icon. Pray for our nation. Pray for the Congress. Pray for the, the House and the Senate. Pray for our governor, the state assembly, the senators. Pray for our mayor. Pray for our neighborhoods. Pray for our schools and our youth ministry. Pray for Reverend Jonathan Butler. He's suffering from the flu. Are there other names? Call the names, invoke them, shout them out. Let's thank God for the presence of Evangelist Marie Ray Tatman. Give her a big hand. She's here at the church today. Now, Reverend Judge Beverly Phillips, as she always so fervently, meaningfully, and with power prays for us. Though we can pray for ourselves individually, but it's always good to have someone else to remember us in prayer. Pray for us, Judge Phillips. Oh, mighty, mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, God, we know that you're high and holy, righteous and faithful. You've been so good. You've been good to us. If we had 10,000 tongues, that would be insufficient to praise your holy name. But, oh, God, we come in the name of your faithful and beloved Son, the one who introduced himself to John and to us, saying, I'm Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Yeah. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all those around the altar and all those in the wider audience. Lord, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. Oh God, we ask that you would forgive us of all our sins and blot out every transgression. Excuse our faults and our failures. But now, Lord, we still have some challenges down here. Not that you don't know what's going on, because you know our uprising and our down sitting. You know us from the inside out. Oh God, we praise you right now. We've heard the names of those
those on the sick list, and some have been sick for so long, seems like getting well is not coming into view. But you said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but you delivered them of all their diseases. We've heard about those in bereavement, and oh God, we know that you are able to comfort them as nobody else can. Only you can gather their tears in your bottle and then give them joy on the other side. Lord, we praise you right now. Thank you for being a forgiving God. For you know all that we've done, all that we've said. You know us from the inside out. And some of us have a smiling face, but you know the inside. And I thank you because you allow us to even have a spirit of discernment as well. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We pray, we lift up to you our pastor, and when he comes forward with the message of the morning, let it be a word that will convict the sinners and revive the saints. Oh God, we need reviving. We've got a downcast spirit worrying about what number 45 is going to do. Oh, don't worry about him, because my God is still in control. He rules the world. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me. He's got everybody. And he cannot do no more than you allow him to do. Never been in a church to be revived or to worship your holy name. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would look upon all of the political officials and give them a close walk with you. And if they haven't walked with you, let them get to know you and to know you are right. Lord, we praise you. We ask that you bless all those around the altar. We don't know their needs, but you know what they need one by one and collectively. Give them an explosion of favor in their lives until they are be living on the overflow instead of just dripping from the cup. We thank you, Lord. Bless your people, we pray now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen.
stand and remain standing until you receive words of welcome. We don't have any visitors today, so I would like to welcome everyone to church this morning. Coming together as a church family is a gift from God that we must always cherish. Today we must remember that we as people of God must continue to love and encourage each other to press on towards the mark. Family, let's not rush off when church is over, but stay and tear with each other in fellowship. Thank you all for coming and let's continue to do the work of the Lord together. Good morning again to everyone and especially to our live stream audience. And permit me to share with you that you are witnessing the worship services emanating from the historic Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, California, where we have been serving God and humankind since August the 1st, August the 1st, I repeat, 1852. And we are no ways tired like Old Man River. We have just kept rolling along. No splits and no schism. We always been focused on persons and not petty politics. The kingdom of God and not cash. And God has blessed this church to distinguish itself as the oldest predominantly African-American Baptist church in these western United States of America. Stand up and give God a big hand and yourselves a big hand for having one more day of serving God, serving others, of having blood running warm in your veins, of having your right mind, and the ability to put one foot in front of the other. Thanks be to God for this exquisite, excellent, effective music that we've heard. And some gonna catch the spirit after a while. Yeah, it will get you after a while. God speaks to us in sundry and different ways. All good music is great music. And we've heard an inclusive, eclectic, universal expression of the gift of music coming to us from our united voices. And I want to publicly commend Reverend James Smith as to how he's reaching out to the wider community, working with the conservatory to make sure that we be the embodiment of excellence and effective communication of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the instrumentality of music. Now I want to again say too much cannot be said about the success on yesterday. We ought to commend good seed and good soil that's productive and that's what we witnessed on yesterday. So with all of the men please stand who were there cooking. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you. I guess Brother Cedric uh, had too much to eat. Where's Cedric Carter? Oh, he, he's working. All right. Okay, had a flat tire, is that it? All right, well, God bless you. May he get that tire fixed and roll on in here. Brother Cedric, president of our layman, and we thank God for all of the work that he does with a willing spirit every day, taking senior citizens food, making sure that they are communicated with. We thank God for him, Brother, Brother Cedric. Brother Cutter, Curtis Oaks, we, we didn't call your name last Sunday. You need to stand up again. We Stand up, Brother Curtis. Brother Curtis, give him a big hand. Give him a big shout out. And while mentioning significant things for the benefit of those who went around, uh, particularly the younger ones, 
Curtis Oaks is the man. Stand up again, Brother Curtis. Don't sit down too soon. Curtis Oaks is responsible for this congregation having what used to be the refugee house. He was younger, had more hair on his head then, and involved in real estate. And when he heard that that house was available for our acquisition, one Sunday morning, without even going to a meeting, to study it, and when study it, do, do nothing. But on a Sunday morning, I stood before this pulpit and told them that we needed about forty thousand dollars to acquire that property. And it was this young man who made the arrangement. And Sister Maddie Collins over there wrote a big check, gave the church a loan, Brother Roboni. You can do things great if you got a will, and God will make a way. And Brother James Johnson's sister, gone on to glory, retired teacher from the school system. What's her name from Austin, Texas? Come on. Thanks be to God. Sister Martha McHenry. Martha McHenry kicked in $20,000. I can call it now. Or she's shouting in glory. But I cite this history to say that we as a people have got to stop talking about what we can't do and have some can-do religion. We have a whole lot of hallelujah religion. But we need more dual your religion. Say amen, somebody. And we got some members and some deacons and trustees who know how to have dual your religion. And we thank God for your spirit and all the good work that you do for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now, so you won't have to be asking next Sunday where I'm, I'm going to be away for a good reason. I have been invited to give a major address at a World Peace Conference on reparations. Right. So you pray for me as I win my way to Seoul, Korea, where there will be heads of states from all around the world, Central America and from Africa, and uh, this is Another opportunity for Third Baptist, this brand, to be celebrated in other parts of the world. You already have in your bulletin, but I want to underscore it for particular emphasis. The announcement regarding the passing of our iconic, ingenious, creative maestro, Sir Jews Haywood's passing. The funeral arrangements are pending. There will be a service at a later date, and Sister Bessie, Stuart Ross, Brother Wagner, Brother Douglas, and others will be working to bring to fruition a service celebrating Sir Jews's life. He gave over a quarter, half a century of service and putting Third Baptist Church on the map musically. When the Cathedral Choir was created under his direction and with the involvement of Sister Charlie Mae Haynes, our late first lady of the church. So let us all right now stand in acknowledgement of the gift and the long services of Sir Jews Haywood. And also we should add to that list Sister Melly Faye Osborne, the mother of our own Reverend Portia Osborne. The schedule for the services in the bulletin 
Wednesday, January 29th, viewing from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. The interment will be Thursday the 30th at Sacramento Valley National Cemetery in Dixon, California. Brother Noah and Sister Melly, what are they doing in heaven today? Where joy abound without a tear. Thank you, O oh God, for those who made life sweeter, brighter, and meaningful through study and through music. And everybody said, Amen. Now let us prepare to give our tithes and offerings for the morning. Let us just prepare to receive the offering. Let us again remind everyone, though this is the fourth Sunday, which tends to be the off Sunday and the lean Sunday, but we must bring it to the level of being the high Sunday for our children and youth. During the month of February, we are going to up, beef up, hype our evangelism effort to recruit 25 children for the Children's and Youth Choir. So, if you have nieces and nephews who can profit greatly by the exposure to creative, meaningful musical education that we provide through the Tinley Academy of Music and through the Youth Choir, come on and help us sign them up. Let them join this great Jubilee experience. And as we begin today, to begin the recruitment for those who would qualify to go to Africa with us, on this venture for youth, young adults, ages of eight to 21, you're welcome to come to the NACP meeting today at three o'clock, at which time we shall give out more information regarding that venture. This is not a junket. This is a journey to our history beginning in Mother Africa. Let us keep in mind the prayer meeting on Wednesday at 6.30, at which time we shall continue our study session on Epiphany and begin the journey through Lent, Ash Wednesday, and ultimately to Good Friday and Easter.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. standing we shall read the scripture passage in which our sermon will be based today however you have in the bulletin several other reference scriptures that I invite you to consult but for this morning I want to call your attention to Genesis chapter 15 Beginning at verse 1. I'm reading from the translation according to Eugene Peterson. <laughs> After all these things, this word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward will be great. Abram said, God, Master, what use are your gifts as long as I'm childless? And Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit everything. Abram continued, See, you've given me no children, and now a mere house servant is going to get it at all. Then God's message came Don't worry, he won't be your heir. A son from your body will be your heir. Then he took him outside and said, look at the sky, count the stars. Can you do it? Count your descendants. You're going to have a big family, Abram. And he believed, believed God. God declared him set right with God. God continued, I'm the same God who brought you from Ur of the Chaldees and gave you this land to own. Abram said, Master God, how am I to know this, that it will all be mine? God said, bring me a heifer, a goat, a ram, each three years old, and a dove and a young pigeon. He brought all these animals to him and split them down the middle and laid the halves opposite each other. But he didn't split the birds. Vultures swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram scared them off. As the sun went down, a deep sleep overcame Abram, and then a sense of dread, dark and heavy. God said to Abram, Know this, your descendants will live 
as outsiders in a land not theirs. They'll be enslaved and beaten down for 400 years. Then I'll punish their slave masters. Your offspring will march out there loaded with plunder, but not you. You have a long and full life and die a good and peaceful death. Not until the fourth generation will your descendants return here. Sin is still a thriving business among the Amorites. When the sun was down and it was dark, a smoking fire and a flaming torch moved between the split carcasses. That's when God made a covenant with Abram. I'm giving this land to your children from the Nile River in Egypt to the river Euphrates in Assyria, the country of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Rephraim, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord.
I want to talk a little while on whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Back in 1932, the wife of a coal miner in eastern Kentucky, when the coal industry was unjust and unsafe, and those men who had labored in horrible, inhumane conditions down in the mine shafts. And this nation did not even have a sense of decency and respect for the workers' right of coal miners. When the management came out to Sister Reese's house to jack up her husband about leaving that strap. And they took him out. She went into her room and wrote this song. Whose side are you on, boys? Whose side are you on? They say in Harlem County there are no neutrals there. You either be a union man or thug for J.H. Blair. Whose side are you on, boys? Whose side are you on? My daddy was a miner, and I'm a miner's son. He'll be with you fellow workers until this battle's won. Whose side are you on? Boys, whose side are you on? Oh, worker, can you stand it or tell how you can? Will you be a lousy scab or will you be a man? Which side are you on, boys? Which side are you on? Come, all you good workers. Good news to you, I'll tell of how the good old union has come in here to dwell. So which side are you on, boys? Which side are you on? That was not the first time that this question was raised. But in the 32nd chapter of Book of Exodus, you will find there a story at the 19th verse. And it says in the 32nd chapter, and that's what it was when Moses came near the camp and saw the calf and the people dancing, his anger flared. He threw down the tablets and smashed them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made, melted it down with fire, pulverized it to powder, then scattered it on the water and made the Israelites drink. Mm -hmm. Moses said to Abram, what on earth did these people ever do to you that you involved them in this huge sin? And Abram said, Master, don't be angry. You know this people and how set on evil they are. They said to me, make us gods who will lead us. This Moses, the man who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. So I said, who has gold? And they took off their jewelry and gave it to me, and I threw it in the fire, and out came this calf. Moses saw that the people were simply running wild. Aaron had let them run wild, disgracing themselves before their enemies. He took up a position at the entrance to the camp and said, whoever is on God's side, join me, all the Levites. 
I raise the question again, whose side are you on? Twenty sixteen. A gang of folks said, Bring all of your gold. Bring all of your silver. Bring all of your racism. Bring all of your anti Semitism. Bring all of your privilege for the 2%. Bring all of the oligarchy government that has nothing to do with democracy. And we're going to make a calf that we're going to worship. It's known as the alt-right. And the graven image over it will be one Donald J. Trump. Bring all of your nastiness. Bring all of your vulgarity. Bring all of your alternative facts. Bring all of your chauvinism. And we're going to make a God out of it. Oh, where's Brother Preacher going here this morning? I'm just coming in to tell you that a long time ago with Father Abraham, God made a covenant with supposedly America. We claim to be a Christian nation following God, being a city on a hill where there would be community. But all along the way, though God had promised us good things, and even though there was a period of being under King George, the men of us went to sleep while they were collecting the gold. And when they woke up, it was not King George, but it was George Washington, the new president of the United States. But you know what? There was one man who bowed to the wrong God, Bennett Dick Arnold. He joined the Continental Congress for a while. I'm giving y'all some history here. But after a while, what did he do? He defected to the enemy, to England. Ah, yes, you see, Brother Wang, where I'm calling. I'm turning the corner now. We are here going to sleep. Some folks not taking any sides. But I say it's time for us to define out what side are you on now? Are you on Schiff's side or are you on that man from South Carolina side? Who don't know what side of the street he's going to walk on. He walks like the lady of the night on both sides of the street. But there comes a time. There comes a time when somebody ought to understand that once to every man and nation comes a moment to decide in the midst of truth and falsehood for the good or evil side. Yet that scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow keeping watch above his own and saying to America right now, saying to you and me which side are you on? Where do you stand on this 2020 election? It's going to be all too late after a while. I know some of us say I'm neutral. But I heard old Bonhoeffer say to not take a stand and not to be in the is to take a stand. God will not leave us guiltless if you don't stand up and say for God I live and for God I die. The time is now for America to show which side are you on? Are you on the side of a death spot? Are you on the side of a czarist? Are you on the side of a democratic society where everybody is somebody and where everybody has a right to health care and has a right to good education and has a right to a safe community? Which side are you on? That's the question this morning. And uh, how are you going to determine that? The time it's come for us to say, stop the music. The party is 
sauber. It's in the text. Moses went up to the mountain to pray and left Aaron in charge. And Aaron didn't have no backbone. He couldn't stand up for the principles of God and the principles of taking care of the people, giving them the best and not giving them junk. Yeah. And he caved in. Maybe. Moses, while away, didn't think that maybe what he had given his life for would be torn up and messed up by someone who didn't have the courage or conviction to say, boo to a church mouth. What happened? When Moses came down the mountain, all the noise was going on. They were dancing, they were carousing. They had some, some spirits too, yes. And so Moses thought maybe they were singing praises to God, but he drew closer. And they were singing praises to power, to materialism, Come on. The militarism. Come on. Reverend. Getting ready to fight. Right. And when Moses got down there and he saw what was going on, he threw the tablets down mm -hmm. and the tablets broke and it was pulverized. And what happened? The water was messed up and they drank that brackish, dirty water. Mm. Our political water in this nation has been polluted. And we were around here drinking it like some, some cyanide that was in the Kool-Aid. Somebody better hear me this morning. The question is, what side are we on? I ask you now, as a personal friend, what side are you on? Well, two things of what you could consider. Let's go back to brother Abraham. Abraham was told by God in Genesis the 15th chapter that I'm going to bless you. Your descendants will be as innumerable as the same. But you've got to do something to claim your blessing. Come on, brother. Many of us want to be blessed by God, but we won't do nothing. Come on, come on, come on. We think God's going to do everything for us. God has given us a brain to think. God has given us a heart to beat. God has given us feet to walk. Come on. And we think God is going to do everything. That comes a point in a time. You got to get a new truck. The Lord told Abraham, you got to get some doves and you got to get some uh, some some lambs and and you got to give me something that song says I am satisfied with Jesus he's done so much for me mm. but the question comes to me when I think of Calvary is my master satisfied with me and the question for us, is God satisfied with our stewardship? Talk, 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 yeah. Is God satisfied with how we treat our neighbor? Come on, come on. Is God satisfied with how we support our children? Is our maker satisfied with us? That's the question this morning. Everybody want God to bless them, won't do nothing with God. Help me, somebody. You remember that story of that man who was out there in a storm, like a hurricane from New Orleans, Brother Jim Smith. And he was out there waiting on God to save him. <laughs> Somebody came along with a helicopter. <laughs> they dropped the rope down. The man begging for him, come on up. He said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> Lord gonna take care of me. Finally, somebody came back with, with a boat. Put a motor on the back of it. Purring down 
The way. Yep. Yep. Yeah, come on, get on board. <laughs> no. I'm waiting <laughs> on the law. <Lord. laughs> the law is going to save me. <laughs> and then one of those damn broke. And that rascal drowned. And when he got to the pearly gates, he was arguing with St. Peter and said, why the Lord didn't save me? The Lord is supposed to take care of me. I paid my tithes. I've gone to church. I prayed to God. I have sung in the choir. Right. St. Peter said, you didn't get the thing right. You didn't understand what side you had to be on to be saved by God. You wore God's colors, but you didn't play on God's team. <laughs> he said, how is that? Boys came back and said, on this team, you got to understand there's something that every player has to do. I sent you a helicopter. You wouldn't accept it. I sent you a boat, and you wouldn't get a boat. God was working through the helicopter and God was working through the boat. God knows God wants us to be fellow laborers with God. And it's time for America to get up and get to work and get involved and work with God. I was on a conference call the other day with Walter Brueggemann, a lot of other great scholars, Jim Forbes, and they were starting out talking about these constitutional crisis that we were going through. We knew that a year ago. But you know what they were talking about, Sister Posa? It's time for us to fast and pray. Call on God. It's time for us to repent. Repent for what? Black folks didn't make this mess in this nation. It was made, made by those, that no offense to those who are white, but we got to tell the truth. It was made by white entitlement in this man. So what are we going to be praying to God for? God wants us to get up and be counted for the census. God wants us to get up and register to vote and get your loved ones registered to vote. God is telling us, what side are you on? Will you stand up to save this democratic society? Or will you go under like ancient Rome went under? Will you give to the hands of those Republicans who will not tell the truth if the truth was in their favor in the Congress. God knows God is saying to us, get up. Yeah. Whose side are you on? Where are you standing? Yeah. God wants us to stand in this hour. And then finally, I got something else in that book. You see, this book is powerful. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, God works same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's in that text with Abraham? It stated that you read it when you go home. After 400 years, God said, I am going to give reparation. Did y'all hear what I said? It's all in the book. Amos didn't put it in there. God told Abraham, your descendants will be enslaved. Yes. But after 400 years, the slave masters will be no more. Help me somebody. That's the book there. We have come through 400 years in 2019. And many of us weren't even on the side of celebrating and acknowledging that your ancestors were enslaved for 400 years. And you ought to have been doing something to acknowledge it as the Jews acknowledge their enslavement. Come on, come on. The years passed by. The Board of Supervisors didn't pass not one resolution in acknowledgement of the slave trade. And yet they can give acknowledgement for everything. Sanctuary city, help me somebody. That's all right. Gay rights, we got to do that too. But God knows it's time for us to declare where we stand and it's time for every black face and the friends to stand up. Reparations now is overdue and no idea is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. It's time for San Francisco to pay up. Help me somebody. Pay up. Reparations. It's the 400 year mark here. 
And the Bible says, after 400 years, the dejected, the marginalized, the ostracized, those who've been knocked down, ought to be bouncing up like the, a balloon and saying, I thought that I was down, but God pushed me up and I'm knocked down, but I, I'm never knocked out. For this God I know is on the inside of me. And if God is in you, you are on the right side. If God is in you, no man can stop you. If God is in you, you are able to say every day, I know I got a great savior. I know I got somebody on the inside who will give me hope when there's hopelessness. Give me peace in a storm. Give me light in dark places. Give me running in my feet when I don't feel like moving. Thanks be to God. Somebody say there's something within. Something within. I met God one morning. I was feeling so sad. So heavy laden. I had a bow down here. But he lifted my burden and made me so glad. All I could say, there is something within. Have you that something that heavenly fire? Have you that something that never does tire? Oh, if you have it, you ought to let the world know. I got something on the inside. Makes me smile on the outside. When the world is beating on me. Something on the inside that put clapping in my hand. Running in my feet. Something on the inside that I'm saying I feel like going on. Clouds on every side. I feel like going on. I'm going on now. I'm going on. I'm going on to see what the end will be. I'm going on. There's a great camp meeting for you and me. But don't you claim that you don't have nothing. God has promised you something. The Negro spiritual says in this amazing grace, yeah, the Lord has promised good to me. His will will be secured. I will be blessed because God is. God is still on the throne. God is still in the blessing business. God is still working miracles. God is making a big day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel all right. I'm standing on the promises. Standing on the promises that will not fail. Are you going to stand? Are you going to stand on Christ? The solid rock I'm going to stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Thanks be to God this morning. Thanks be to God. I feel all right this morning. Thanks be to God. What side are you on? I'm not concerned about what side man is on. I'm concerned about being on the side of God. For this God, I serve. This God, I serve. He's able. He's able. He's able, able Marie. Did he raise you up? Say yes. Say yes. He's still healing folks right now. When you decide if you're going to be in the party, just dancing in the frivolity. Are you going to stand with Joshua and with Moses who says, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. If God be God, serve God. If Baal be Baal, try Baal. But Baal will fail you. For this God I serve is faithful. Faithful. Morning by morning. Faithful. Oh yes, he is faithful. He's faithful. Four hundred years. You get reparations. Four hundred years. You gotta assume responsibility. After four hundred years, you gotta be revived and renew the covenant. And it will work for you, Dr. Dicky Hammer.
our reparations through God and our efforts are on the way. Brother Chapman, Brother Wagner, Brother Smith, young man back there with his wife. Stand up, Brother Smith. Stand up. With his wife, with his grandbaby. Stand up, my. Stand up, madam. Albert Smith. Stand up. Stand up. My brother, Alan. Stand up, brother Alan. Your hair white like mine. Brother Alan, D. with Alan. Stand up. Stand up, brother Cedric Carter. Always standing, never sitting. Oh, thank God. Stand up, Brother Taylor. I need some men out of the camp. Or declare what side of them. Stand up, Brother Andre. 90 plus years old. And ain't tired yet. Yes. 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 Y'all stand up. Brother Mason, stand up back there. Stand up, Brother Bell. That wonderful young lady there next to you. Oh, God is blessing us. Who else wants to stand with the Lord? I know these people, I can call them out there. They, 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 anyone else want, 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 want to be on the Lord's side? Who want to be on the doing side? On the side for reparation? Stand up. Don't, don't, don't stand if you don't mean it. I'm not putting you on the spot. I, I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to let God do a new thing. I can end this sermon right on that. I told y'all yesterday that I was over to Bethlehem for the catechizing of five ordinates to preach the gospel. All of them were excellent. Their works were exquisite. Judge, theologically sound, huh? socially relevant. But there was Mother Ruth Marsh, 93 years old. And when she came, she was sitting to my left. She came and she, she sat down. I didn't know that she was one of the ordinary. And so Dr. Bernstein, Brother Ronson, introduced her and said, This is mother, Ruth Marshall. And I thought she was coming in to pray for us. <laughs> and he said, we're going to let her go first. And the pastor said, Mother Marshall, tell your story. And she sat there with the aura and the presence of Harry Tubman. And she said, my mama told me that I was born in 1923 in Thibodeau, Louisiana. You know what it is, dude? And she said, my mama told me that when I was three days old, a hurricane storm came and took the roof off the house. She said, but the storm passed over. 
And since 1923, I've been on God's side and I ain't tired yet. She said, I had 14 children. My husband and I came out here to work in the shipyard. We saved our money, bought property. And she said, I'm the oldest member of Bethlehem Church. And she said, I have been under three preachers. She said, but I told every one of them, don't you get lazy on God. Mm. You make sure you go over to the other side and see the new thing that God has for you. She said, I've been going since 1923 over to the other side. I come through many storms, through the rain. She said, I'm here. And she said, they didn't want to ordain me back in the 80s. But I was determined to go on and see what the end would be. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't mean no harm. But she's in the church now at 93. Getting ready to be ordained this afternoon at 4 o'clock. The church is pastored by the man who was president of the California State Convention where they kicked us out of the convention because we ordained Martha Simmons and Lysa's other preachers. Don't you tell me what God can do. And now at Bethlehem this afternoon, they're going to be shout. They're going to be shout because Bethlehem is on God's side. No chauvinist church on the devil's side. But a church where women and men too can preach the gospel. I feel all right. That's something that's shining right now. I live to see the day that in third Baptist, women can be deacons, women can be preachers, women can be trustees, because we are on God's side. When I get to glory, I want to hear God say. Now I want to see who, who's going to be on the Lord's side. I'm going to go to the other church. Come, Mr. Candles of Baptism. Come by that of transfer. Come on your professional faith. Doesn't matter what your race is. Come on and get on the side. We need a team. We need a strong line. We need a strong line. The quarterback can't win the game by himself. We need a strong line. And as the choir sings, I'm pressing on the upward way. Won't you come? I'm pressing on the upward way. Why don't you come on, press on? I'm getting every day. Boy, girl, man, or woman, come on, just as you are. My feet on your ground. Sing that second verse. My heart is no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears in me. Though some may dwell, where these abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Come on and go higher with us today. Lord, let us all stand. Every heart stand. There's somebody who maybe wants to come. Just as you are. We are recruiting. 
not for a party, but for God's army of peace, production. Come on, there's somebody else. There's another soul. I want to live above the world. Those Satan's dots are at me a hurl. Those some may dwell. But we caught the song of joyful sound. Song of saints on higher ground. Oh, lift us up higher. Is that one? Come. The door is open just for you. benediction we are on higher ground I've already gotten seven votes for reparations for African Americans in the city and county of San Francisco and the God is going to give and me and the four others I know we're going to do it Mayor Breed is supporting it and I want you to prove that you're on God's side for it's written in the book divine reparation that after 400 years Israel will be blessed and we are Israel not money in anybody's pocket but a program of a fund for education economic empowerment health care the heritage is building but we can gather around our own fig tree and vine and celebrate our culture with our friends. Thanks be to God. Better housing. We on our way because we got on the right side of history. And if 500 Jewish rabbis in Chicago last December can support reparations for African Americans let us not let God down by being indifferent and not doing something to up for yourself. God bless you. Let us receive the, the benediction. Brother Wagner has an announcement. Just a moment. Let us announce it. Thank you, Brother Pastor. Uh, I'll make this brief. Uh, we saw this wonderful announcement of uh, Sir Jules Haywood's uh, passing and Sister Ross and Brother uh, Haynes and the pastor and I are working on the uh, services and we'll get a, a date to you as soon as possible. Uh, many of you have asked when will the funeral be held. But I also want to just say one of his protégés who was uh, Jim Davis Jr. Yes who left here to go to Abyssinia Church there in uh, Harlem, New York. He has left there and the prodding of the pastor and certainly myself, yes. he's gone to Yale yes. to get his master's in conducting. And I talked to him just this week as I let him know about Sir Jules Haywood's passing. Sir Jules passed his baton on to, to young Jim Davis. Uh, Jim Davis, who was, I think, around 29 at the time. He said, Jim was the first person that he saw in his 50 years of conducting the music here at Third Baptist was worthy of his baton, and he passed it on to him. But the good news was, I said, Jim, how are you doing in school? He said, I just got my grades, I got all A's, hey, and, hey, a, hey, and, hey, an a, and an A minus. All right. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Uh, thanks be to God. 
Rem Lewis will come and give us the benediction. before this day thank you for the precious word we've heard we've heard great words before but this message today we must know what side we're on no wavering we must know we thank God for Pastor Brown who made plans this day without a shadow of a doubt what side we must be on yeah. now unto him who made it all plain unto him be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever he who made it plain what side we must be on unto him Unto him be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Got the sad news that Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash just now. 
Kobe Bryant. Yeah.